Albany, Mississippi. We welcome to the Element Wealth Studio on the Tanglefoot Trail, Steve Massengill. He is a member of the Mississippi House of Representatives, represents District 13. That includes Benton, Lafayette, Marshall, and Union Counties, where we are. Uh, Vice Chairman of the House Transportation Committee. Representative Massengill, always good to see you, sir. Thanks for coming on. Hey, glad to be here, Gerard. And also, now my district has Pontotoc. Okay, yeah, okay. So. Had a little change when yeah, we did sir. some redistricting. Yes, yeah, sir. So, so now I have parts of five counties. Wow. Yeah. I don't know that any other reps have there, touched there, five counties. There are a few. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, appreciate you clarifying that for us. So you serve, of course, as vice chair of the House Transportation Committee. We've seen a couple of MDOT uh, trucks coming by, and I saw some work uh, going on on Highway 7 on the way in, but uh, things seem to be going pretty well. Hey, we are, uh, we're doing a lot of work on our roads. You know, last year we had a record amount of money that we were able to put into MDOT. Uh, of course, the MDOT budget was about $1.4 billion, and then we added like $650 million in special projects, and uh, we're excited about all the work that's being done on that. Yeah, uh, and it seems like uh, Executive Director Brad White's doing a great job over there as well. Brad, is uh, he has really turned the uh, MDOT around. I think we have a great working relationship with the legislature, and uh, Brad's a great guy, and he, he's doing great things. Look forward to working with him in the next four years. Well, from a personal perspective, I will say that we finally got that 49 finished there. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> How big a deal was that? That was, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I don't drive down there a lot, but I, I do go down there occasionally, and that is a big, big game changer to get that done. I'm, I'm telling you, that was... Uh, that was awful while they were doing it, but it is great now. It is, it is awesome now, I agree. It was sort of painful when it was going on, but what a huge task and effort that was and, and just had to be a little patient. We're talking about, for the benefit of our audience, the stretch of 49 that is in Rankin County and uh, in, the, in the Florence and Richland area, which is just a dream now, honestly, right. compared to what we have. So that was good work, and that's the route we in central Mississippi and, and to a great extent in north Mississippi take as we travel south in Mississippi to Hattiesburg, the coast, and so forth. So yes, sir, big it deal. is. It is, and it's, uh, I think it was like eight miles and yeah. about 300 million, but it's, uh, it's Man, great it's now. And, you know, uh, Steve, I bet we'll see – some uh, some investment in new economic projects as a result of just that transportation corridor. I would think for sure down there. Just uh, I mean, I was down that way not long ago, and just all the opportunities that are, that are there now, it, it should be great. Yeah. Anything uh, specific you can talk to us about that's on your radar for the coming session? Let's start with uh, with the transportation committee in general. Is this just sort of a business as usual, or any specific? Uh, request or issues you got to address? Well, I think, uh, well, yeah, a lot of it be business as usual, but, uh, you know, there's always constituents that come up with ideas for you. I, I have a friend that the other day told me, he said, hey, man, he said, I think it's any way we could get side by sides legal to drive on the roads. I was like, well, hmm. I, I don't know. It's, hmm. I know some other states have done that. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to look into that. You know, and see see what's there. Uh, I don't I don't think they should be on interstates by any means. Uh, but maybe roads that are gravel and non-stripe roads. Maybe that that you know maybe they could do that. You know, some of those vehicles are thirty and forty thousand dollars now. It's like buying a car. So, you know, if we could get it to where we could put a tag on them, have blinkers. You know, okay. they already have headlights and tail lights. Okay. You know, I. I'm going to look into it, and hopefully we'll we'll have some discussion. I'm going to meet with uh, Department of Public Safety Commissioner and see what his input on that is, and yeah. maybe the Sheriff's Association see what what their thoughts on it are. You know, just safety-wise. Yeah, sure. Well, and and you mentioned that maybe it was something that that uh, just came from a constituent, a citizen. Steve, what about just input uh, from commercial operators, truck trucking companies, and so forth? We have several truck yeah, companies yeah. in our state. We do. Well, I actually work for one. Okay. Uh, Big M Transportation out okay. of Blue Mountain. Okay. You know, I work for them. So yeah, that would. Uh, we'll definitely talk to MTA, yeah. the Truck Association. You know, all that. But, you know. Yeah. And a and great organization that is, but I just just wondering how much, curious how much input they provide well, uh, to the legislative they, process. They do. They do have a good, you know, anything that deals with trucking, we usually, you know, run it by them. And, you know, that sometimes they have ideas that they want to try to get passed, and we'll look at that too. Yeah. Awesome. What? Uh, so we got a uh, new term kicking off yes, in, sir. in January, as, in, uh, as well as, of course, a brand new session. Uh, we're going to have a new Speaker of the House. We are. Very and, 
Um, looks like we'll uh, likely continue with the same uh, leadership in the in the governor's mansion. That's my prediction at this point, and the lieutenant governor as well. But uh, how do you see maybe things changing with a new speaker? Well, you know, it's uh, it, it'll it'll be a little different. Yeah. You know, of course, uh, we we assume and think for sure that Jason White will be the next speaker. Yeah, and you know his philosophy be similar to what the speaker Philip Guns has been. Yeah. you know, in the past, but yeah. he's worked closely with him. So some things will be the same, but there there'll be some different stuff. You know? Might be some committee shuffling, huh? There there should be a little yeah. bit of difference. Well, that's that. that's the prerogative that of the is, speaker. That is, it's, it's definitely a, a new speaker usually means new, new new chairman. So yeah. we'll see how all that goes. Something that uh, we've been talking about on the program uh, quite a bit, Representative Massagill, uh, uh, over the last couple of weeks is just the push to expand school choice options in the state of Mississippi. We had the Empower Mississippi and Unleash Mississippi event, third annual last year. Do you have any particular thoughts about that? You what know, you uh, on that? well, that, that's a good question. It really is. You know, and I do think some of those ideas could work. Uh, I'm not as wide open as some some people may be on some of that, but I'm definitely open to listen and to see what you know what they have to offer this time. Yeah, and see how it goes. Yeah, for sure. Well, I think uh, that Speaker Gunn was uh, I would say was probably in uh, in your camp and that he was kind of moderately interested in it. Uh, but I think uh, the incoming speaker has got a little stronger interest in it. But, um, of course, what I've explained to the audience is, look, it's a blank slate. It's whatever, you know, the legislature can agree to to make work. There's no, like, um, it's not a zero-sum game. There's there's no, like, just specific template or model for implementing something like this. It's, it's uh, again, what ever seems to be popular with the citizens and it can get through the house exactly the well you know everything's a, a debate and you got to you got to be able to give and yeah. take so yeah we'll just see how that plays out something else we've been talking to uh legislators about as well as municipal leaders is uh is this old PERS thing <laughs> that's out there that is just no easy no easy problem to address, but I got a feeling that's going to get a lot more attention in the coming term. I, I think we're going to take a real hard look and see if we can't sure it up somehow. Yeah. Uh, I know there's a lot of different ways we can look at it, and hopefully we can you know, make it to where it will last throughout the next 50 to 100 years. Yeah. You know, right now it, it sort of worries me that it might not last another 20 years like it stands. Right. So, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what all we're going to do, but I know we're going to, you know, look at it and see if we can't figure out the best way to go forward with this. That's certainly what the actuaries are telling us, are uh, telling PERS in their, in their documents and their analysis that you're going to have to make some changes or um, you're going you're gonna to face an inflection point at some sometime in the future. Of course, we have the same problem at the federal level with Social Security and Medicare. Some tough choices and decisions are going to have to be made there. We do. We, we, do. we got uh, sweeping tax reform done in the 22 session. Do you think there will be a push to expand that even further coming up? What do you think? Well, I think, I, I really think, you know, we've, we've phasing that in over a four-year period, and yep. I, I think we're sort of going to be in a little bit more of a holding pattern to see how, the economy's going to go if it's yeah. going to pick up, you know, which, you know, we're lucky in Mississippi. Our, our world is pretty good, but uh, I think we're just sort of going to be in a little more of a holding pattern just to see how it goes in the future. See how it affects revenues yeah, yeah, exactly. and how inflation affects. Exactly, because, uh, you know, we still got three years on the phase-in part, and, you know, if we did something, it wouldn't do, it wouldn't start after that. So yeah. I think we will we'll be more in the holding just to see. Okay. Well, uh, I, I know I hear a lot about that, you know, out, out in the public. Of course, the health care uh, environment and uh, industry in the state of Mississippi is, is in some tough, uh, straight times right now. And, and uh, I don't know exactly what the legislature can do, but probably going to have to coalesce around at least talking about it, coming up with something uh, to address the problem. Yeah, the the healthcare is is a big concern. I mean, you know, as as I'm getting older too, uh, and my parents are too, it's just always a worry on how how it affects everybody. I mean, it really does. And you know, those that are less fortunate that don't have good coverage, you know, I, we need to we need to help them. Yeah, you know, yeah. Do. So that's uh, I think that's something that the legislature is likely to at least start discussing. And that and a lot of people want to kind of. 
uh, equate that to Medicaid expansion. It's much bigger than just Medicaid expansion. There, there's just a, needs to be kind of an all-in, all-the-above sort of approach to how do we fix this this fundamental problem. Yeah, I think uh, we can do it. We can do stuff without expanding Medicaid. Yeah, you know? exactly. Well, we appreciate you coming on. Always good to talk to you, sir. Thank you, Steve. Thank you very much. Yep, we're coming right back with more here. The Element Well Studios in New Albany, Mississippi for the Tallahatchie River Festival today. So